Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Tractor Man Party 4 here. Uh, this morning, we're going to take this old rig here in the new trailer and run up to the neighbors where we've been uh, the last couple of days, spending a few hours cutting down some trees for him. And we're going to haul the pole wood back on this particular trailer, put it on this trailer so I don't have to unload it. We can just kind of shift it around and put it wherever we need and then unload it whenever we need it right at the woodshed, you know, ready for the buzzsaw. Yeah, I was up there for a couple of days, but there was so much time involved in uh, cutting, you know, trimming, of course, but we had to burn all the brush and kind of clean up the area and everything. So it uh, doesn't look like necessarily a lot of wood for essentially two days worth of work, but uh, it actually really wasn't that bad uh, for the quantity that we got. So at any rate, we're going to go up there and throw that uh, pole wood on this trailer and see what the, uh, what the trailer looks like after we get it thrown on. It might look like madness, and it really is, but there is a method to the madness. If you notice, I've got the shorter to mid length in the middle and in the front, then I'm putting the longer ones on the tail end of the, of the trailer. And I'm trying to put the large ends of every piece in one direction. That comes into play big time whenever you're transferring them to the, to the buzz saw. Uh, because you always want the big end to go through the buzz saw first, so you don't have that, all that weight on the back side pulling down on you while you're trying to take the uh, the small end through the buzzsaw. You want the big end over here to be the counterweight and cut the counterweight off so the remaining portion of it is light. So you always want to stack your your uh, pole wood in line with your saw rig or your, your buzzsaw in that fashion. Another thing too, it might look like I'm straining my guts out on some of these bigger ones, but uh, for those of you that might not be, that might be a little new to uh, handling wood or handling heavy things or whatever, I'm really not. I'm letting the wood pick itself up most of the way and I'll show you what I mean. I'll try to describe it. On its own this piece here is very very heavy. Well both these pieces are very pretty heavy but uh, if you want to bend over and pick it up like a barbell you can but what you do you just pick it up like this and then use your leg as a fulcrum and let the weight pick itself up to where you just shift it right onto the trailer. No paint, you don't, no straining hardly at all. Now there's some of them, there are some of them make me strain pretty much. But those however were not. 
Here's another one here, it's a good example, because it's a little smaller. And I pick up with the back of my hand and throw in. Sometimes I get the hand this away, but I have more strength on the larger ones to get it like that and throw it. The small ones to the middle. Moderate length to the front. Long ones to the rear. Then you get pieces like this. This is a good one. My strain on this one a little bit. You know, I know a lot of you guys are wondering why I'm not using a skid loader to load all these and I'm loading them by hand. If these were all perfectly straight poles without all the twists and bends and everything in it, it'd be a snap to run into the pile with the skid loader, pick them up, balance, go over and drop them in and have them roll into the trailer nice and neatly. But <laughs> if you've been around this kind of twisted limb wood, you know that and you can probably tell on some of the skid loader videos just picking them up and, and moving them. When you go into these gnarly piles, all different lengths, all different configurations of branches. When you pick it up, they just come apart like spaghetti. You know what I mean? And so you, you start to move and they fall off, they fall off, they fall off and drag off a third or a half or more. So the best way to do that is to come in with your skid loader and load them onto the skid loader by hand. Then take the skid loader over to the trailer and dump them. But what happens because of the nature of all the twist and turning as you're dumping them, they go crooked, they go crazy, and you still got to straighten them out. So I've been doing this for many, many years, and the easiest thing for me to do is load them by hand just exactly like this because it minimizes my effort. Makes me sweat a little bit, yeah, you know, no doubt about that. But in the long run, it's pretty doggone easy to do it this way. I ain't telling you all to do it. You know, do whatever you want to do in whichever way you want to do it. This is just what works for me. What works for you is going to be entirely different, quite possibly. I didn't time it, don't know how long it took me to load them, but I had uh, three locations I had to pick from, and uh, or to load from, and so that's it. That's a 20 foot tandem trailer there, and you can see, like I described a little earlier in the video, the moderately length ones are in the front, and the longer ones and the heavier ones are to the rear, and then some short ones, uh, short stragglers, you know, thrown in the middle. All in all, for, you know, probably, oh, a half hour, 40 minutes or something, wasn't too bad loading.
I got to tell you, were we going out on a highway or something, we'd never load a load like this. We're only going 500 yards back up, you know, my little gravel driveway. So uh, we don't have to be too concerned about what we've got loaded and how we've got it loaded. Uh, the main thing is just to get on the trailer, get up the house as quickly as we can, get ready to unload it, you know, and then we'll be about our business of doing whatever we need to do with it. So uh, at any rate, hope you all enjoyed that. And uh, I may or may not film unloading. If not, this is Tractor Man 44, and I'm out of here, guys. <laughs>